y'all, this is Cindy. I'm the Tireless Tangler, and you've arrived at day 70 of the 100 Days of Zentangle Project 2020. Thank you all so much for being with me on this journey. I can't believe we are at day 70, just one more month left. It is June, and we've been at this since the beginning of April, and I find that incredible. And what I find even more incredible is that you guys have been here with me every day. So thank you. Our... <laughs> Today's tangle is called Ying. It is by Kitty E. Cat, it, Cat Kwan, Kit Yi, CZT in Asia. And uh, it is a fun, cool pattern. This is related to the Sakura flower and the and the cherry blossoms. Uh, I guess they had a an exchange between Japan and the U.S. of trees or stamps or I don't know. You guys go to Tangle Patterns and read the article. But this is uh, uh, supposed to be a mix of dogwood and um, Sakura flower, I believe. So uh, whatever it is, it's pretty cool. Let's get started. All right, now I made an ink tense tile for this. I used some fuchsia ink, and uh, because since this, uh, since the article had cherry blossoms, I was just thinking pink, and so that's what I'm going to use today. And I have made a short video on how I created this tile, and it will be at the end of this video if you're interested. I know a lot of you have expressed um, interest in diving more deeply into these tiles, um, how to finish them up, how to really um, give them that that uh, extra quality. And I've been thinking about how to incorporate something like that or more like that. And uh, I've got some ideas, but uh, let's focus on this 100-day project and see where we end up. Don't throw away your tiles, and if you are at a place with your tiles where you're not really sure where to head from there, then uh, don't give up on them. Put them aside, hold on to them, and chances are you will uh, learn something as we go that will uh, that will help you finish them up. All right, so let's step this out. This tangle is a focal point tangle, which means it's ta it takes up a large portion or of your tile, or rather it means that that is where the eye is drawn, okay? And you can set this up to the side or in the center. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and do a center flower simply so that I can have room to step it out for you, and then we'll see where I go from there, okay? So what we need uh, to begin with here is we need, um, We need sort of a five point star thing. Now I'm not very good at five points. <laughs> so I usually make an X and then add another one on, but that's really not, um, it's not really an accurate way, but uh, hopefully it'll work. So what we want to do after we get this far, and we're gonna put a little orb on the end of each one, okay? So, I also do not stop recording, but also people, uh, before we started the video, uh, we got into an argument and uh, we finished it all up, but uh, you should uh, tell us if you have any ideas on how to stop uh, making arguments. <laughs> okay, my kiddo would like to have some, some suggestions on how to stop arguing. I think that's a good idea. So drop some knowledge on us, you people. You better. <laughs> you better, he says. All right, so this is kind of awkward, but this is how I'm going to approach it. And uh, if you do a better five-point star thing, then, then go for it. All right, so what we're going to do next is we're going to make some slender, slender. C-shapes that are going to be connected to the point. And we're gonna do one of those rather like we did on the Tangle Pattern Arcand. Now, 
when I draw this, I really struggle to get these thin enough to fit them in together. And so when that happens to me, I'm just going to take that petal shape behind the one next to it and not worry too much about it. Rather like this. Now this may end up um, out of whack, but I bet you we can make it work. I think in retrospect, I would have rather had my smaller nib pen like a zero one, but uh, I this may be better. This may be better because of the color. We'll see. Now the last step to this is just to put a little V shape at the end of each one of these little these little petal sections. Remember to turn your tile as that will give you a more consistent result. By the way, if some of you have some suggestions for me about better ways to draw this five-pointed thing, I would love to hear those. This ended up really small, that's all right. That may give me an opportunity that I didn't have before. Okay, so the last thing to do is to put these little flower flicks up from the bottom. In her uh, step out art, Kat has uh, quite a few of them coming up so that they are pretty interesting. She also adds some dots at the tops of some of these. Also, make sure to like, subscribe, and comment down below. All right. Mari says, like, subscribe, and comment down below. You know, we love to hear from you. Comment down below Zentangle if you're a Zentangle fan. Yeah, okay. Comment Zentangle if you are a fan of Zentangle. I think we know where I stand on that. All right. So this is your basic tangle, all right? Now, the next thing you can do is add more of these little petal shapes behind. Now, how do you do that? Start by drawing in as much of another petal as you can get and connect it with a V. Yeah, and you can do this and sort of incorporate it if you have room. It may just be the top of a flower or a petal. No, oh, I got a heart in there without meaning to. And so that can be as much of a petal or as little of a petal as you would like. And you can make the tops different if you would like. Now, I don't think on the step out she has got any of her background uh, petals um, embellished in any way. She's just got them stuck back there and that's fine. Um, I may decide that I don't like that many. Now, if you want on, on these uh, other sections, you can still put in more just by putting that little V-shaped end in the crevices. Turning your tile so that your hand position is comfortable. Now, as, as a little blossom tangle, this can be whatever you would like, okay? You can keep going, whatever. But this is our basic tangle, all right? This is ying. Now, for me, I want to do more. 
So what I'm gonna do is take this particularly um, blurried area right here on the corner, and I'm gonna put another one, hopefully bigger than this, in here. And let's see how I can do that. Um, Um, I'm trying guys, I'm really trying to get that, that to look better. That might be a little bit better. <laughs> we'll see, we'll see. Okay, so for this one, I think I'm going to extend my skinny petal shapes out a little bit further, like this. Well, I meant to sharpen those up, but it's all right. And I'm gonna turn it. Put another long skinny petal shape. Although I probably could have fit a little more petal on that one. And I may not have room for the whole entire petal here. And by extending these petals long on this version, then I've made more of a petal opportunity in between them. That ended up nicer than this one. <laughs> okay, let's try this out. Add some more petals here. So you can see this is quite simple, but very pretty. So, let's see. Let's put in our little flower flicks. And with this pen, I'm really using a light pressure to get less ink, usually. <laughs> I have less control that way. I'm gonna flick a few on these back petals, but not too much. The little dots are kind of fun. They do add um, an extra quality and certainly cherry blossoms have that kind of a thing. Those little yellow innards with the little dots on them. So that's kind of fun, even though this is supposed to be non-representational. <laughs> we all know what we're doing. And it's fine. 
you know, we're still using a structured pattern and we're still able to zen with it. So as far as I'm concerned, that's fine. Whoops, went a little crazy there. All right, so what I'm gonna do now is continue to add these elements all over here. I'm going to do them exactly as I want to. Um, I'm gonna just make myself happy and make some pretty flower looking things and see where I end up. So I wanted to bring this up one more time because uh, I, <laughs> Uh, I talked about this at the tail end of a video uh, a day or two ago, and uh, I'm not sure anyone was still awake at that point. So, uh, um, yeah, I know I fall asleep in my videos too. Don't don't feel bad; it happens. Um, but uh, I had a really good suggestion or comment by someone uh, a couple of days back, where uh, they wondered if no music in the videos would be a good choice. Uh, not because of the copyright things or because they didn't like the music. Uh, it was because uh, they felt like uh, when they had to stop the video to catch up with me, which honestly I can't even imagine, when they had to stop the video to catch up with me, then, then the music went away and they didn't have music to tangle with. And so um, I was curious how you guys would feel about that. Um, I certainly understand that because I am like you guys, I love to tangle to music, but I also recognize that my, my taste in music is not everyone's taste in music. Um, I've been trying to change it up a bit here and there so that everyone gets something a little bit different, but um, because of the, the uh, limitation on music choices, uh, that is kind of difficult to do. Um, so I'd really like for you guys to leave me a comment and let me know uh, how you feel about that subject. Um, if you would rather have no music at all, uh, so you could listen to your own. So something, something to think about. All right, I'm going to do another large one, except I want to think this through. I, I don't particularly want this small element to sit on top of a larger one. I mean, it can. There's nothing wrong with that. But um, generally, I find if you have a much smaller element on top of a larger one, it's confusing to the eye. Um, but I could put a, it partially behind, maybe. Um, or what if we did this? and put, put a partial element in the corner, like we have done before, starting in the middle. to make them a lot longer than that, but it is what it is. And I guess it'll be interesting to see how these look with that petal thing way up at the top. That is absolutely not what I intended, but it'll be interesting to see how it turns out. in flower flicks in and hopefully that will spice it up a little bit. Okay. 
Alright. Now, let's put another smaller one, although every time I try to get big they end up being small anyway. So let's just let's just start and see what what, what blah. Let's just start and see what we come out with. Oops. See, that's too too uh, close into each other, but we'll try to make it work. And if this is an example of it doesn't have to be perfect, I don't know what is. Now, just try to keep the base of this fairly thin. you guys are enjoying your Monday. I am enjoying my Sunday right now. Oops, I forgot some. We are having a quiet Sunday at home, which is kind of the way we enjoy our Sundays. Gives us a chance to do nothing. Well, gives Kit a chance to do nothing, which is the way he likes it. And however you want to finish out these little shapes, these little flower petals, you can do as few or as many as you like. Okay.
I have failed in what I had wanted to do with this tile, which was put a really large element that sort of overflowed everything. However, I remind myself at this point, if we are being representational, that is thinking about the tree flowers, it is really, when you see those, it's just a mass of tiny little flowers. And so maybe I need to rethink think my strategy here just a tad. I've actually decided I really like the little dots, if you couldn't tell. Um, I think they dress it up kind of cool. All right, so maybe two more. See if I can fit one right here. Well, that wasn't so bad. I may or may not be better at these when I get done here. I mean the five-pointed little star things. Well, hopefully you can't hear my stomach growling because that would be embarrassing. But you probably can. I don't know about that one, but okay. Um, actually, maybe, do I wanna put another one down here? Maybe one more. Goodness. 
I'm trying to decide if I, oh, I might as well. Okay, so this is where I'm going to stop the flower elements. And um, quite frankly, I sort of like this one that's a little less busy, but um, either way, it's not much less busy, but a little bit. Okay, there we go, that's busier. <laughs> All right, um, the question is, do I want to ink anything in the background now? Do I want to maybe draw an aura around? Uh, and I do, I actually do want an aura. So I'm going to start someplace. <laughs> I'll start right here. And I'm going to add an aura around all of these elements and see where I end up with, see what I end up with. Remember, an aura is just a parallel line, a line that you draw parallel to something that you already have drawn. Let's see. Now, do I want to work these all into one aura is the question now, and I think I do. So, let's see how we can do this. I think I'm just going to draw those together like that, and then continue our ing on this flower. So when I get close to the next, um, the next arrangement, I'm just going to skip over to it with my aura line. And I need to not get so close. What I'm seeing from this aura is very interesting looking. It's quite, um, jagged and uh, I think it's going to be a lot of fun. I hope it's going to be a lot of fun when we get finished.
I don't know what that was. And I don't want to know. <laughs> okay, so let's start over here. Hmm. Okay. So that is wow busy. <laughs> really wow busy. And uh, I'm going to have to think about what I'm going to do next. Um, I am considering doing rounding in all of these tiny little crevices. That is going to be quite a bit of work. Um, I'm considering rounding uh, between my petals, but I don't know that I want to do that. Um, and I don't think I, I had considered adding some other element here in the background, but at this point with these, I don't know that I want to do this. And this over here is like crazy busy. What I may do is uh, go over the background with the part that is not in a flower with um, graphite and just sort of gray this out just a little bit and that would bring uh, more of a vibrant uh, look to what is there on the flowers and that's a possibility. Um, I probably will definitely use some colored pencil um, in here in a similar shade to sort of um, bring some dynamic um, depth in here to the middle of this one in particular. Uh, it doesn't bother me that the color doesn't go across each one. Um, what I can do is take my white Prismacolor to the edge of this and uh, really blend that out with the tips. I probably will uh, bring my white Prismacolor in here. Let me grab one and show you. Uh, when you have a watercolor background or something with paint on it, uh, your white Prismacolor is is uh, something that works really well to sort of, um, let's see, what's a good place to show you this? Well, let's, let's hope it works for me. Let's zoom in. Okay, so this doesn't show as much. Um, cautionary note, if you're going to use your white Prisma and you're going to go over your ink, for example, this inked line right here is now no longer as inked, or rather it's not as vibrant a color as it was. So, so when you use your white Prisma color, be cautious about going over ink and make sure that anything you go over uh, you're okay with um, 
maybe redrawing a line or something. So this is how I'm going to handle this in general. Um, uh, you know, I may tweak a few things. I'm just not sure. Uh, or another thing that I could do with this that would be really dynamic would be to black the background between these and just leave these elements sitting on black with the color. So um, I have several possibilities that I can use and uh, I haven't quite decided what it's gonna be. I know that the jelly roll is gonna look great in here. Um, a little tap of jelly roll on the tip of each one of these is gonna be a uh, really uh, cool finishing effect, but of course I don't wanna do that until the very last thing once I'm finished with shading and everything else. So this is where I'm gonna leave you to, for today. Um, I heard the comment that you would like more um, of the finishing tile portion of this. So the way I'm thinking of in incorporating a more in-depth lesson on finishing tiles and, think and uh, such is this. Um, I have the ability to start channel memberships, and I haven't done that because I have wanted my content to be free for everyone because as a person myself who who struggles with budgeting and has very little income, uh, it's hard to find extras for things that we feel are frivolous. However, I still have a family to support and uh, I want very much to um, do both. So what I have decided to do, I think, is to when we do things like step outs and, and things where I start tiles in this way, I will go ahead and make that uh, my, free, my free content, the stepping out the patterns, and then doing the tile and finishing and designing and embellishing and all of the extra stuff, uh, those portions of these I will save uh, for my channel members who, uh, and I intend to make the membership uh, fee very low, um, for those of you who are interested, because I know that many of you struggle uh, financially. And so I'm hoping I can make the, the bottom tier like three or four dollars each each month. And that would give you access to more exclusive, more in-depth con content here on YouTube. So that's what I'm thinking about. Please give me your feedback about uh, both the music and this and the channel memberships in, in um, comments. Okay, so this is where I think I'm going to leave you today. Um, I will let you put the finishing touches on your art. Please remember to uh, check with me on Instagram. Either send me your art as a direct message or just tag me with it uh, when you post it to your, to your profile. Remember that if your po profile on Instagram is private, that is fine. But you'll need to send, or I'll need to uh, send you a follow request in order to see that. And that is okay. I don't mind doing that. So, so I know there are a lot of you that are interested in the way that I prepare my tiles. And since uh, today's tangle is going to be a blossom type tangle, I'm going to prepare my tile uh, with some, uh, with my ink tins. But you can use watercolor pencils or uh, standard watercolor if you like. And the first thing I'm going to do today is I'm going to really um, saturate this tile with a decent amount of water. And this is a retasp tile, so I had an old pencil uh, string on here that I erased. So once you have your uh, tile set up uh, nice and damp, then you can take your color, whatever, it, whatever color it might be, and I'm going to use a pink because of the tangle uh, is supposed to be um, cherry blossom related. And now I'm gonna, I loaded it from the pencil tip and I'm just gonna drop and get some sort of uh, color blooms on here. Just like this, and I'm gonna I'm gonna do it very um, sort of randomly, and just sort of let this drip down and do its own thing and be what it wants to be. And just give it a few places of interest.
just like that. I'm going to try to do one right here in the middle. I'm going to have my main, my main entity. And then a few more of these around the edges. I didn't quite want to get at that. That um, I didn't want to get a squared off border or anything, which is kind of what I ended up with over here. So I'm just going to go through here and there and dot a little color on there. Make sure there's plenty of water. Just like that. Now, if you get runs and that kind of thing, that's fine. Uh, once we have tangled over the top of this, it's gonna look really cool. All right, so I'm gonna leave mine right here and run my hair dryer over it and dry it real quick while I clean my brush off. You absolutely do not want to add uh, to leave ink on your on your aqua brush or your paint brush, and you can of course use a paint brush there. Some of you may be more comfortable with regular watercolor. So that is how I'm going to do this. I'm going to run my hair dryer over it here real quick, and we'll be ready to go. and we're ready to tangle. I'll see you again. So uh, I can't wait to see you guys tomorrow. I hope that if you uh, are, are behind on this, you will not stress out, but if you have missed any of the videos, you can check them out in this playlist right over here. And uh, if you haven't seen this video over here, you might wanna check that one out. And of course, if you are one of the half of you, there are 50% of you that are subscribed and 50% that are not. And if you're coming back every day, I think you want to subscribe. Subscribe. All right. I'll see you guys tomorrow.